Hi there. Um, this is a video where I want to go into the depths of what is covered in data science, machine learning, and AI machine learning programs within Scalar. Uh, now, before I do that, let me just segregate on who these programs is for and like what do these programs do, and then I'll get into the exact content also covered within these programs. Now, if you're somebody who is a beginner in the field of data science, um, you are looking at, let's say, roles within uh, analyst roles. So you want to become a data analyst or a product analyst or a risk analyst or a business analyst for some uh, within some companies. Or you're looking to become a junior data scientist in some of these companies. Um, you might have some exposure to coding. You might have some exposure, basic exposure to, to analyst kind of uh, work. In that case, the data science machine learning or DSML program is the program that we have built for you. And I'll also elaborate on why that distinction. But in case, let's say you're somebody who has already uh, either been a software engineer in the past or uh, you have been a, a data analyst in the past, you have been a, a junior data scientist in the past, you're rather looking at transition into a senior data scientist role or a machine learning engineering role or a deep learning engineering role. So an engineer looking to get into machine learning engineering or a deep learning engineering role or a analyst or a junior data scientist looking to get into senior data scientist roles, then the AI ML program is the program for you. Now, why this distinction? Why are there two different programs? Why are they solving for uh, similar outcomes in the similar field? What changes with seniority? So firstly, like analyst versus data scientist, there is some difference. Uh, analyst to data science, there is some uh, learning curve. As an analyst, you're only expected to be good at Python scripting, SQL, how to query data, and then how to make sense of data, and then how do you apply your business sense to derive insights from the data? What kind of metrics should you go after, et cetera? Um, not necessarily, let's say, predicting or building a model. On junior data science roles, um, you're required to be aware of most modeling algorithms. Um, and you're required probably to be able to use these modeling algorithms, which means, um, let's say, uh, Google TensorFlow. Like, can you use the Google TensorFlow APIs and maybe implement that in your system? Then you're a good junior data scientist. You're not necessarily required to optimize models as a junior data scientist. However, the moment you transition to senior data science roles, um, or a machine learning engineering role or a deep learning engineering role, I'll come to the engineering roles later, but let's say if you want to transition to senior data scientist roles, there the expectation is that you should also understand the models so deeply that you can actually go and optimize these models in your own use case. Um, so if you're an engineer at, let's say, Flipkart and you categorize products, uh, the categorization might have some error rate. How do you bring that error rate down? Can you optimize the models to do that? Um, now, very similarly in machine learning engineering and deep learning engineering, you're required to be a good engineer, which means the kind of assessment that engineers go through, which is some rounds of DSA, you will also go through that. But apart from that, you're also required to understand again all forms of Modelings, for example, what kind of models are used in recommendation systems? What kind of models are used in spam detection systems? Uh, you're required to be aware of those. In fact, well aware of those. Not just that, you should now, I mean, your system design rounds are not your uh, generic system design rounds, but rather system design rounds for ML systems. Um, for example, if you're building a recommendation system, then like uh, what kind of process would you set in place? Uh, if a job is not running well or if the recommendation system is not working well, what is, how do you go about debugging that? Some of those becomes the area of focus uh, instead of your <coughs> regular system design. So um, LLD, etc. are not so much in focus anymore. So DSA followed by uh, your knowledge on machine learning and deep learning and deep knowledge on machine learning and deep learning followed by ML ops and ML system design. Those become the track for you. Um, because there is diff so much difference in depth of knowledge required. So hence, we have two different programs. Now, let me go into the depth of both of these programs. I'll first elaborate the DSML program, and then I'll elaborate the AIML program. Um, 
And note that while I'm elaborating the content within these programs, every single piece of content is delivered via live lectures followed by assignments. And these assignments are again not MCQs, but rather assignments that require you to apply whatever you have learned. That could be in the form of uh, some coding, could be in the form of, let's say, going over a case study and then coming up with inferences there, um, and so forth. In fact, uh, in some of these cases, the kind of assignment might also be conversational, which means uh, you have a system that you actually talk to, explaining your approach and the system then basically cross questions you or probes or tells you about a case that you might not have considered. So that's the way learning happens. Now let me go to the content of DSML and then AIML. Within DSML, we initially focus on making sure that you understand whatever it takes to become a great analyst, which means um, uh, we focus on good understanding of SQL and, and how to write complex SQL queries. Um, we focus on making sure that you understand how to write code in uh, Python. In fact, before that, we also focus on Excel and Tableau. Uh, as other tools that you, you have uh, familiarity and awareness of. Post that, we focus on making sure that you understand how to write code in Python. Um, how do you get really good at exploratory data analysis? So within Python, then how do you use NumPy, Pandas uh, to extract the right kind of data? How do you plot it in graphs? Um, and, and how do you derive insights from that? So that's your exploratory data analysis. Um, we also have content there to make sure you understand the right kind of metrics. So if you're a, if you're going into product, then what kind of metrics do are typically looked at? Uh, case studies there to make sure that you understand what those metrics indicate. Very similarly, if you're going looking at business, then like what kind of metrics will make sense in business and hence you should be optimizing for those. So that's your analyst track. Here, I mean, time to time we offer electives depending on domain that you might belong to. So if you come from finance domain, then there might be a financial analyst kind of a track which goes deeper into case studies which involve uh, finance. That being just one of the examples. Once your analyst track is done, that post that, then we start a track to make sure that even if you join a job on analyst, um, you have a path to become a junior data scientist soon. Or if you wait long enough, if you are able to learn well enough, then maybe you start your career as a junior data scientist. We obviously recommend that you go step by step, learn everything that is required to become a data scientist, but then like take up um, a job whenever you can so that you can start applying whatever you've learned. On the data science track, that's where we first uh, start teaching with mathematics required for ML roles. So this is prop stats, um, linear algebra, basic calculus that is relevant to the machine learning algorithms that you're going to learn. Um, that is then followed by classical machine learning, which is uh, both firstly on supervised data and then on unsupervised data. And, and then that is followed by uh, deep learning modules, where you might learn basics of computer vision, NLP, um, and then an elective where you get to learn about transformers and LLM, um, if again, that's, that's, that's something that you're interested in, given that's been becoming popular, more and more popular over a period of time. For those who are interested, I mean, there's also an elective on uh, ML ops. So um, as you get into data science roles, how do you do ML ops so that you become more and more effective data scientist? Uh, that helps with, with that. So that's your entire DSML curriculum. Um, within AI ML, however, there is less focus on making you an analyst. So some of the earlier modules um, where we spend a lot of time teaching you SQL and like NumPy, Pandas, etc. We spend we spend very little time there because we assume that you already know some of this. Um, but we spend a lot more time going into much more depth of the machine learning side of things. Um, we, for example, if you want to become an MLE, then we spend time on um, on ML system design. Um, we spend more time in explaining more techniques and going into depths of then implementing those techniques, which ensures that you understand those techniques deeply. Um, so less time on analytics, more time on the ML and DL side, which is machine learning and deep learning side of things. So that's the broad difference between AI ML and, and the classic 
DSML program that we run here today. If you want to go into the depths of the topic that are covered module by module, if you're interested in knowing more about the subtopics within each of these modules, I'm attaching a link below. If you open that, then module by module, you'll be able to see the subtopics that are covered. Note that every subtopic might be covered across multiple classes or might be covered in a single class. That's not specified yet, but like the entire module will end up covering all of the topics that are there present in the link. Thank you.